You're probably used to seeing the tropical white springtail, Falsomia candida, in most terrariums, but these are a little different. They're still springtails, but they're red in colour, and they're a little bit chubbier than their cousins. They're called Bylobella brawnerae, and I think they're some of the most unusual terrarium inhabitants I've ever seen. They look like they're not of this planet. In this video, I'm going to turn this jewellery box into a home for them. I'll need to seal up the edges because I can see that there are some gaps, so I'll use some silicone to do that. But before that happens, I'm going to sprinkle some fish food on the surface to encourage them to come to the top. Because at the moment they're just down the sides and it will make taking them out a little bit easier. My hand shaking. <laughs> I didn't realize that the bottom also has some gaps in, so I'm going around every single corner and making sure yeah. that there are no gaps. I'm not very good at this. So that's all of the edges sealed. I'm gonna give this 12 hours to cure, and in the meantime, we're gonna make it the substrate. So this soil mix is going to be a little bit different than my usual one. I'm not going to add many stones or um, bonsai mediums to it because I noticed that within the culture that Adam from Micro Exotics gave me, it's, it's pretty much totally organic. So I'm going to go in with a scoop of coir. I'm going to go in with a big scoop of worm poo. Love worm poo. And then I've got some nice orchid bark here. And that is going to be the substrate for my red springtails. You should probably wear gloves when doing this, but I am going to wash my hands afterwards. Worm poo is still poo, I suppose, so. That's what our soil looks like. Check out all those grooves. Springtails are gonna love that. And I soaked it because Cork bark's really dry and it takes a while to wick up any water. So I gave it a good soak for a good few hours and hopefully the springtails are gonna enjoy it. So my box is nice and sealed now. I've left it about 24 hours so that the silicon had time to cure. And it's time to make this terrarium. So in goes the soil. And as usual, I like to arrange it so it's going to be higher at the back and lower at the front. At this point, spray the terrarium with some filtered water. If you're interested in getting the same water filter that I have, and I highly recommend it, then you can click the link in my description and get 20% off an Epix water filter. They're absolutely fantastic and they're a very ethical company who I enjoy working with. So I have no problems recommending their products to you. Okay, so this is looking pretty moist and it's cork bark time. I think it'd look nicest that way. Yeah, definitely that way. This is a type of moss I like to use and it's just called Java moss. And it's meant for aquariums, but it works very well in terrariums too. And to use it, I simply take some trimmings like this. And I'm gonna cut it up into tiny pieces into this. Maybe it'd be easy to do this with a knife and a chopping board, but it doesn't have to be perfect. But the idea is to cut it up into really tiny little pieces and then to spread it across the surface of the soil. I'm 
I'm gonna leave a little patch here because that's where I'm going to leave the food for the springtails. It gives me a nice filming opportunity right at the front. So I'm gonna leave that patch bare. It's looking really nice. Let's go choose some plant cuttings. Now this is one of my favorite ferns. It's Perosia numularifolia, and it's known as the creeping button fern. So we're gonna use that. So this terrarium's definitely seen better days, but it's about two and a half years old, which is crazy. Um, I got the decanter from Facebook Marketplace and every, everything pretty much died in here except for the Celiginella, and I'm gonna use that in this terrarium too. This mini globe has some Pilea Pinocchio, which is a plant I'm very fond of, so I'm gonna use that too. And something else that's just caught my eye is this incredible terrarium, which had a fern in it, but the fern died and now lots and lots of baby ferns have appeared, so we'll put some baby ferns in too. Here are the terrariums that I'm taking cuttings from, and we're going to start with these lovely ferns. This is going to be difficult. Oh wait, no, it's not. Yeah. First plant I'm going in with is this baby fern. So I'm really pleased with how this looks. Um, almost forgot that I was making it for the springtails. So let's add them in. Whoa, I can see that they've all 
gather to the surface. So as soon as light hits them, they kind of run away. So let's try and be quick about this. You're a hungry little guys, aren't you? So that is my Red Springtail's new home. I really hope you enjoyed the video because I enjoyed making this one. And actually as the weeks go by, I'm enjoying making YouTube videos so much more. Um, when I look back, I started making YouTube videos really in January 21. And when I look back over this year, I'm so pleased about everything and I'm so pleased that I have a subscriber base and that everybody who watches my videos is really interested in terrariums so I'd really like to thank you all for watching my videos because it really does mean the world to me. And if you're interested I have a Facebook group with about three and a half thousand very dedicated terrarium hobbyists in. Um, so I'd really like you to join that group if you'd like to. It's called Terrarium Group and the link is in the description below. As always thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you next week.